be able to make movies, you need a couple things. You need a video camera and you need audio gear. When going through my apartment and looking for some of my old cameras, I came upon this camera, which is a Panasonic video camera that I had, the first camera I ever bought. And I got to thinking, how far have these cameras come? How far has the technology advanced to where you can really make a video or a film on any piece of equipment, even an iPhone for that matter? It was cool going back and looking at my old footage, so I thought I'd give you a taste of what I was making when I got this camera. Enjoy. Our plans as media directors in the future of novice tournaments, um, I think it's just going to be the same as what we've done. More battle scenes, more epic bazooka scenes, more, just basically more guns, more bangs, better quality. I think everyone can get better, but basically it's just more guns. Looking at some of that old footage, it really puts it into perspective how far the technology has advanced. That footage was all shot on mini DV, basically a miniature sized VHS tape, if you will. One of the major setbacks of the mini DV era was its low resolution. At most, you could get 480p out of it, and that didn't work with a lot of people and their workflow. Also, transferring and logging all the footage and transferring it over to a digital medium was very difficult and required a lot of ancillary products. Then they came out with the DSLR, what I'm recording this on. This is my second camera I purchased. The DSLR revolution more than doubled the resolution you got. And with the compact form factor that DSLRs provided, it really moved the larger camcorders shooting on mini DV out of the market. Uh, the Canon Rebel T2i. This camera turned making movies into a inconspicuous task. It looked like you were sort of just going out and taking pictures. You could use this technology and make a film when people didn't even know you were making one. It made it so accessible that filmmaking became fun. It became a party. It became something you could just do in your backyard, invite some friends over, and just toy around. So many people jumped on that bandwagon. From vloggers, to YouTube content creators, to serious filmmakers that were looking for a cheaper option to produce their feature films. With the DSLR market becoming the new standard for visual media, you saw a new technology of mirrorless cameras. And with that advance in technology came even more content. People who were not even thinking of making visual content for an audience suddenly could start affording professional level quality out of their cameras. And this is where we are today. We are in an environment where you can afford a camera like this. Not only is it exciting to know that so many more people are able to get this technology and make high quality content in feature films, but just to engage in the feature film community here on YouTube has been really, really exciting for Dan and I. You can now catch the eyes of big time filmmakers who are exploring this platform for feature films. So how did we get here? How did our cameras go from 480p, barely, on a mini DV recorder to shooting on SD cards, solid state drives, and able to capture images up to 8K now? Well, the answer is competition. When camera companies are working on better products and they keep competing against each other to get the best product possible, the consumer wins. You are left with technology that is increasingly advancing and the technology that you couldn't even imagine 10 years ago in your pocket. But as I think about the future of filmmaking and independent filmmaking here on YouTube, isn't that the same? When I think of other filmmaking channels, making feature films, making short form content to teach other people about filmmaking and to build this community of feature filmmakers, this competition that has been brewing over the last 10 years has created better and better films. Who wins in that scenario? Who wins when more and more filmmakers are coming into this space, showing their works on YouTube? Well. It's you guys, the audience. You are the one who wins in this scenario. 
you get to see content that you would never have been able to see otherwise. And when you think about the leaps and bounds that feature filmmaking has been making in the past couple of years, it's, as a filmmaker, it's really exciting to me. If you haven't been able to catch some of our past videos, Dan and I are trying to cultivate and bring form to a movement that we like to call folk filmmaking. This movement of feature filmmakers that are coming out now on places like YouTube because the technology is so easy to use nowadays. We're excited to announce a meetup that we're doing in late August called the Folk Filmmaking Meetup, where we have invited some filmmakers that are utilizing some of the same technology to make their own works. I would encourage you guys to be excited for that coming up. I'll link to a video sort of explaining the movement and the meetup that we have planned. But it's exciting because when you get a couple filmmakers together that have found a home on YouTube, you get to see where the new movement of filmmakers is going, where the content will be going, how many more features are going to be plentiful on YouTube coming up in the future. It's really exciting and I really hope you join us on our journey as we try to make, when I say make, I mean produce 12 feature films starting in August in 12 months. It's a big feat that Dan and I have been planning for a while. We're excited to cap that off with a folk filmmaking meetup where we're able to answer your guys' questions uh, and comments uh, on our content and on the future of filmmaking. Thanks for checking out the content. I hope you guys liked my delve into change in technology, the development of digital media. If you are so inclined, subscribe please, and give us a comment down below. Where do you think this technology is going in the future?